let's talk about scrolly telling. Now, there are a lot of data visualization best practices, and one of them is that we shouldn't have a visualization such as this one where we force the audience to keep on scrolling in order to see the visualization in its entirety. But scrolling, when utilized properly, can really aid you in the craft of data storytelling. So don't scroll away, as in this video, we'll cover the art of scrolly telling and show you the ways on how you can employ this technique to enhance your data stories. Hello everyone, in this video, I'll introduce you to scrolly telling. We'll go over a few examples and show you four different ways that we could best use scrolly telling. So what is scrolly telling? Scrolly telling is a term that describes long-term stories, really categorized by audio, video, and animation effects triggered by scrolling. From a data storytelling perspective, scrolly telling is the art of using scrolling to engage with your audience in telling your data story. Please let me know in the comments if you've heard of scrolly telling before. Now let's step into a few examples. The first example comes from Bloomberg, where he wants to prove a point on how Americans are addicted to trucks. And as you're scrolling down, you're being given different views of the same bubble chart to show you the many ways how pickups are the king of the road and what other trends are really happening in the American car market. And as the end user, you quickly see how the animations change and the graphs really change by being triggered by your scrolling action. And you just want to keep on scrolling to reveal more from the story. This next scrolly telling example comes from the New York Times and it shows the impact of the recession on different industries. You know, how some recovered and are grown, show here in green colors, how some are weren't impacted and others that had quite the opposite effect happened to them that we're spotting in in red here at the bottom. Plus, all the 255 charts that we can go through and analyze at the leisure of our scrolling pace. There's definitely a lot to digest here, a lot of graphs to go through. But this next scrolly telling example is probably my favorite. And why is that? I think you can really understand the death of the problem and you probably couldn't achieve that same effect without scrolling. So this is a story from the Washington Post about a very sad event of a Malaysian airliner that crashed and the authorities were struggling to retrieve the black box from the ocean floor. And here, the data storyteller employed the use of this one graph and the art of scrolly telling to convey to the user how difficult it is to retrieve this black box. So we are starting from the sea level and as we're really scrolling down, we're just going deeper into the ocean. And we can quickly see some well-known landmarks to serve as comparison on how deep into the ocean we are at this point, right? Here we uh, we saw the Empire State Building. Uh, now we're coming to the end of the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building. And yes, we're already quite deep, but we're gonna keep on scrolling down. And you know, we start getting the feeling that We've scrolled down for a few seconds here, maybe 30 or so, so far, but that's kind of the beauty of it, that the audience is starting to experience how far this black box really is. And you know, we still keep going. And we are now at the death of the wreck of the Titanic, just approaching it very shortly. There it is, spot on, on the mark. And we still need to go further. And finally, finally, we are at the end just shy of three miles down where the black box needs to be recuperated from. And as the audience of the story, I think we really feel how deep the authorities need to dive to recuperate this black box. You know, through scrolly telling, we understand the death of the problem. And this is why I find this to be a great example of the usage of scrolly telling. So that begs the question, when should we use scrolly telling. I think scrolly telling is especially suited for a story with a specific chronology, such as in this example here where time is put in perspective. The scroll triggered animations really stretch the timeline. It reveals milestones and really shows how 
Each era fits into history. It tells a chronological story. And at the same time, as we keep scrolling, we keep going back in time and we quickly realize that from the perspective of time, this one minute right now, this one week, year, or even a thousand years is insignificant when compared to how much time has passed since the beginning of the universe. And of course, then comparing it to the trillions, to the power of trillions of years left, you know, even more so. It's also great to show comparisons such as distance. And in the case of our story of the black box retrieval from the ocean floor, you know, we just have one single stacked bar chart, basically, that we are scrolling toward the bottom. So that's definitely a case right there. But I'll give you another example. In the case of if the moon was one pixel explanation, we have a horizontal bar that we keep on scrolling, this time horizontally. Yes, we don't just need to scroll vertically for this one. Now, why we do that? Well, in order to just gauge the vast distances in our solar system. So we're starting from with this one pixel thinking, saying that this one pixel is the moon. And we keep on scrolling to see well, what comes next after the sun. And as a fun fact, John Worth created this after struggling to explain to his daughter how long it would take to get to Mars. You know, wondering if he could use a computer screen to just map out space. And this visualization, I think, does a beautiful job at focusing on the emptiness of space, just helping us understand just how far reaching our universe is. Hey, we got to Earth now. And trust me, we'll keep on scrolling for a long, long time. But I think this is another great example of scrolling telling as we're becoming immersed in this visualization. We're really starting to become impressed by the vastness of space. When else should you use scrolling telling? I think you can find a lot of usage in infographics. Infographics that you want to make a bit more interactive. And through scrolling, you're unraveling the full story of that infographic. And this is a good example of that, where we are shown how much liters of water we're actually consuming on a daily basis. Most of which I think we're not even thinking of. Yeah, that's a lot of liters. So as I mentioned before, we really want to keep on scrolling to kind of see what the infographic will reveal to us next. Because for each scroll, it gives us a little bit more of that story. It gives us a new and different visualization of the issue. Lastly, I guess it's great for when you want to continuously transform the data visualizations while scrolling is performed. We've seen this example before earlier in the video, but here's another great example with this visual introduction to machine learning. By controlling the scrolling, the audience really decides the pace to unfold the story, which I think results in enhanced user engagement. Well, Scrolly telling is a good way to keep your audience engaged and sometimes even immersed in the data story that they are consuming. The scroll gives them a sense of control, exploration, discoverability. I think it can really be a powerful art form to use in your data storytelling. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe as there's at least one new video coming up each week. Thank you.